everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be a teeny bit different from my usual beauty and fashion videos that you watch on this channel. That's because I've gotten myself into being a plant mommy. And I'm kind of one of those people who used to only prefer fake plants because they're easy, like there's really no maintenance there except for light dusting. But I just kind of like having real plants in my office or anywhere around my house because I don't know, it's just kind of relaxing to me. So this is why, as you guys can see, the background is different again. And I have been moving things around in my office again. I promise I'm gonna be doing an office door soon, but I'm probably gonna do it in little sections just so you guys can really see what's in each section. And then I'm gonna do an overall office room tour. When I um, first started having plants in my home, maybe about three months ago when I really started getting serious about it, I found that, you know, having nice pots can be a little bit expensive and I wasn't sure if I wanted to invest in really nice pottery right away because I don't know how long my plants are gonna live. So I just kind of had to get creative on what I use to house my plants. Today, I'm gonna be showing you five different planter ideas that you can easily make or buy inexpensively that'll still really nice in your home. But before we begin, if this is your very first video that you're seeing from me, hello, my name is Anne, and I normally make beauty and fashion videos, but today I'm gonna to be sharing my new obsession, which are plants, and I also make DIY videos, and feel free to, you know, scope around and see what kind of other videos I have in my channel and don't forget to click on that notification bell symbol so you can get notified when my next video will go live. So yeah, let's just get started on the first planter idea. So the first one is going to be super obvious but I'm going to point it out anyway and that is getting your pots at thrift shops. A lot of the pots that I have are actually from thrift shops because they're so inexpensive and sometimes when you're just digging around you'll find hidden gems and one of them is this gold, I think this was like a waste basket but I kind of turned it into a planter. I just really like the intricate detail to it and the gold color of it because it kind of matches the theme that I am going for in this office. Sometimes they have a good variety of terracotta pots. These are good pots to use if you want to put your own spin to it, like if you want to DIY it and paint it. And I also found this white one. I believe this one is just Ikea, but still, like if you were to buy this full price, it's probably like around five or six dollars and at my thrift shop I got it for like a dollar so you really can't beat that. So sometimes I like to splurge on candles just because I like the jar or the tin can that they came in and I want to be able to use that after I burn through my candles. So this old tin candle container is actually one of my favorite candles and it's from Voluspa. Not only that the scent of the candle smells really good but the container is also nice and decorative. So once I burn through the candle I just saved it and used my drill and drill a few holes on it so the water has a place to escape and then I basically use the lid to catch the water so when it's draining it's not all over my table. So now it's kind of sitting on my vanity as a planter. If you have a black thumb meaning you can't keep a plant alive ever, one of the easiest plants that you can have to take care of is an air plant. So air plants are very low maintenance. You basically just need to soak them in water for maybe 30 minutes to an hour once a week. And they'll also be fine in bright light. So these air plants usually just need a place to sit in. I actually have a few air plants around the house because they're just so pretty and they're very easy to take care of. And one of the ideas that I did for my air plant is build this terrarium. I had put my air plant in this bowl which cost me about a dollar at the dollar store and then I just put some rocks and shells inside and then I set my air plant in there and honestly you can pick up rocks or shells like at the beach for free and another option is having those little saucer that you can find at the either dollar store or Daiso and again you can just put like little rocks as a decorative piece and then your air plant and you're done Okay, the next one is a hanging planter and this one will kind of require a little bit more effort on your part but it's still pretty easy and expensive and a hanging planter is also a great idea when your space is a little bit more restricted. You can just easily hang it on your ceiling and it's not really going to take up too much space. I actually got the design idea from West Elm. I saw this hanging planter and I really liked it but I didn't want to spend $60 to buy it so I just decided to make it myself. So to create this hanging planter, here are some of the items that you'll need. So let's get started. Measure about 11 feet of cord and cut four pieces. 
Make sure to tie a knot on each end to keep the cord from fraying. Fold them in half and measure about 5 to 6 inches from the fold. This will be the loop where your planter will hang. Next, just to make things easier, I'm going to tie a simple knot to hold the loop's shape while we wrap the colorful thread. Then you can simply wrap the colorful thread of your choice around the cords. To make them even, keep two cords stacked on top of each other as you're wrapping it. You can untie the knot once you've wrapped a good portion of the loop. So once you have wrapped both sides of the loop with the thread, wrap both sides together to secure the loop. Moving on to where you'll be putting your pot, starting from the end of the loop, measure about 24 inches or 2 feet for the first knot. So take two adjacent cords and tie a simple knot. Repeat the step until you have four sets of cords. Alright, next we're going to take two sets of cords and measure about three inches down from the knot. Then you'll take two of the inner cords and then tie a knot. Repeat this three more times. Measure about 3 inches down again from the second set of knots and you can either just tie a big knot with all the cords at the end to secure or create a foot rope knot like this. Okay, just a quick disclaimer, this foot rope knot took me a while to get so don't get frustrated if you don't get it right the first time. I had to watch multiple YouTube videos to get this. Hopefully I'll be able to show and explain it on this video. Alright, so I'm going to label each cord set A, B, C, and D counterclockwise for reference as we go along, step by step on how to do this knot. Okay, so take your index finger and wrap cord A over it. Next, take cord B and wrap it over cord A sideways. Then take cord C and wrap it over cord B going up. Then take cord D and wrap it over cord C and insert it underneath cord A. So hopefully I didn't lose you there. <laughs> so you should end up with a square like this and this is the first half of the knot. Alright, so we are going to work on the second half of the knot which can be a little bit confusing but I hope you can follow along. To finish the second half of the knot, take the end of cord A and loop it around cord C, then insert the end of cord A in the middle and set it aside. Then you're going to take cord B, loop it around cord D, and then insert the end of cord B in the middle and set it aside. So you're basically going to loop each set of cords to the set that's immediately next to it until you've done it four times total. Once you've finished the round of looping for all four sets, for the second half of the knot, simply Tug the ends lightly to tighten the knot and it should look something like this. Again, don't worry if you don't get the foot rope knot right the first time. It might take a few tries. It's perfectly okay also if you just secure the end of your planter with a simple knot. Once you have tied the knot of your choice, you can wrap the cords again with some colorful thread for added detail. The final idea is this plan stand and I have been just kind of looking for a really cute and inexpensive plant stands, but again, West Elm is not within my budget right now, but they really do have cute planters with stands. So I created this one because I wanted to elevate my plant a little bit with a mid-century vibe. So this one is also super easy and inexpensive. So for this planter stand, here's what you'll need. A round cake pan, folding fabric rack, I found this at Daiso in the organization section, spray paint, E6000 glue, a pair of scissors, and you'll also need a blow dryer to help dry the glue. So we'll be starting off by spray painting both sides of the cake pan with a color of your choice. Then we are going to let this dry for a few hours or overnight. If you want the pan to be waterproof, spray a sealant over it, then let it dry. While the spray paint is drying on the cake pan, remove the fabric off the folding rack to get your base. 
You can leave the rack as is, but I decided to stain mine with this walnut wood stain for a mid-century look. You can also just paint it with whatever color that'll match your decor. Once you've stained or painted your folding rack, make sure that it's been fully dried. Then you can line up the folding rack in the back of the cake pan and mark where you'll place the cake pan on the rack using the pencil. Then apply a strip of E6000 glue where you made your mark on the cake pan. Attach the folding rack on top of where you applied the glue. So you'll have to hold the rack in place for a few minutes and give it a little blow dry until the glue dries a little bit so the rack won't slide off. Then put some weight on the rack and the cake pan while the glue dries overnight before using your plant stand. I've been looking for a plant stand that will kind of raise up my plant a little bit. So that is why I created this and I kind of went for the mid-century vibe for this one. Again, I've been just kind of inspired by looking at the West Elm catalog and that is why this came about. That's pretty much it. Those are my five planter ideas that are very inexpensive and can also make your space look beautiful. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, let me know in the comment section down below if you are thinking about starting having a baby plant or, you know, maybe a plant or two at your house or your room. And if you have some plants already, let me know what your favorite ones are by leaving a comment on the comment section down below. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys on my next one. Until then, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!